Axel Merck, president of Merck Investments, joins us today on Kitco News. Axel, thanks for being with us. Great to be with you. Axel, last time I saw you was in Las Vegas at Freedom Fest in July, where you were telling me you had 50% of your holdings in gold. Has your position changed since then? Well, there are, of course, daily fluctuations, so 50% is, is kind of the rough ballpark here. But but ultimately, any investor should should have the investment what they can sleep with at night. And I feel much more comfortable with my gold holdings than with my equity holdings, for example. Axel, I know you've said in the past that you expected a lot of volatility in 2013 and you embrace it. Can you explain? Well, sure. I mean, anybody who likes an asset, be that gold or something else, should actually enjoy it when it comes down because it's an opportunity to buy more of it. And, and when volatility comes to an asset, it means that only the folks who really like that asset are buying it. Um, when something goes up in a straight line, you have all the momentum players jump in. And, and clearly what happened in gold is 12 years in a row, gold went up. And so a lot of people piled in with leverage. Well, sure enough, um, they are has to be um, a correction that can be rather severe, and we saw that earlier. Yep. And those sort of corrections are great because the weak hands are shaked out. As, uh, as, as we had an offline discussion, there are folks that are bearish on gold. Well, that's great because you, in order to make a market, you need buyers and sellers. When everybody has the same opinion, we get concerned. So we like volatility because that it, it's an expression that people disagree, and that's what ultimately makes a market. Axel, we've had quite a few guests recently that have been bearish on gold, some even calling for $1,000 gold within the next three to five years. What are your thoughts on this sentiment? Many of them are basing it on the fact that they are hopeful for a world recovery, especially in the U.S. How, how do you view it? Well, the biggest threat I think we're facing is just what you're pointing out an economic recovery. And, and the reason I say that is let that money stick that's been printed. And good luck trying to mop that up. And I'm not saying that the Federal Reserve can't, if we had a strong recovery, raise rates by a tad here, but we saw what happened to the bond market um, just when the foot is taken off the gas pedal in a tad, we're losing 100 basis points right, right then and there. And ultimately, if you think about uh, the, the, the long-term challenges we have, not just in the U.S., but in many other parts of the world as well, we cannot pay the promises we've made to the next generation. And culturally, the Europeans might be fiddling with austerity, but we much rather other resort to the printing press to, 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 to kick the can down the road, so to speak. And so if you think about it more specifically, the average cost of borrowing on U.S. government debt is around 2% right now. In 2001, it was at 6%. I'm not suggesting we're going to be at 6% for the average cost of borrowing, but we cannot finance ourselves at even 4%. And so those are major challenges ahead, which means there is going to be an inherent bias to keep interest rates low, and they're going to be lower than required to, to fight inflation. That doesn't mean we'll have hyperinflation tomorrow, but it does mean that the positive driving force underlying gold is going to be there. So that's one reason. The other reason is that I don't think this crisis is over. Um, I sometimes jokingly say we never had a Eurozone crisis. Well, that's the good news. The bad news is we have a global crisis. Look at what the Japanese are doing. Look at what the Brits are up to. Look at the challenges we face in the U.S., which means we'll have very active engagement of policymakers. Asset prices are not reflecting fundamentals. In that sort of environment, gold should do well unless we um, appoint Paul Volcker to the Federal Reserve, in which case, yes, I might be changing my mind. Then we have other challenges. But at this stage, I don't think that's a, a, a high probability. And speaking of a Fed head, Axel, we've seen the shortlist, Yellen, Summers, Khan. Is there someone that you prefer? Well, I mean, what, what, it doesn't really matter what I think. It, it really matters what the market thinks. I mean, I, clearly, the, the, the challenge, you don't want to get that job. It's, it's, a, it's a tough job to be. Um, I know Don Cohn personally. I've met with him a couple of times. And he thinks Fed policy is like a walk in the park. And you just fiddle with things a little bit. And I had the discussion with him specifically. Well, don't you think there's too much leverage in the economy? And you just cannot do what you think should be proposed? No, we'll just fine-tune it. Well, we see what happens to fine-tuning. We saw it in recent weeks. Now, I think Don Cohn is only mentioned um, in order to distract attention from the Summers debate. Um, Summers, he would love to have it on his bucket list. Um, at the same time, um, if, if he really thinks about it, he can be far more effective as a politician um, having access to the White House all the time if he stays in his current role. So he shouldn't really want it. Um, and at the same time, if, if Obama wants to push him through, he can, but it costs a lot of political capital. Um, Yellen is the shoe-in candidate um, for his job. Obviously, uh, Yellen being far more dovish than Bernanke is. So any gold buck in some ways should love it. I'd much rather, by the way, not own gold and own other investments. Um, but just given the world we live in and, and, and what we see at the Federal Reserve, I do think that I'm 
got to sit on my gold investments for a while with a disclaimer, of course, that I can change my mind anytime and I'm not really allowed to promise what I'm going to be holding tomorrow. Axel, do you still look to gold as a safe haven? Well, not exactly. I don't think there's a safe haven at all that's available anywhere in the world. Um, stocks are not safe, bonds are not safe, cash isn't safe, and gold, if your living expenses are in US dollars, aren't exactly safe either. The challenge is we're moving towards an ever less stable society. We're moving further and further away where, where even cash is, is, is retaining its purchasing power, and the question is how to address it. Well, in the stock market, people talk about the correction we had in gold. Well, that sort of correction can happen in the equity market any second. Uh, you don't want to hold uh, bonds either. Now, as, as you know, um, we, we're well known for our views on currencies. The nice thing about currencies is you, you minimize interest rate and credit risk. You also don't have equity risk, so you just have currency risk. And, and sure, you can say everybody is diluting what they own. Um, but at the same time, if you think that um, our policymakers are predictable, there are some great opportunities in the currency markets. Uh, but yes, at the same time, we think gold is, is just the simplest of these investments in order to, to, to be ready for the sort of world that we foresee. And, and so we own a lot of currencies, we own a lot of gold, um, and we're quite happy with that. We can sleep with that at night. We have a risk profile that, that we can be, uh, that I can li live with at least. And are you owning gold physically? Um, in, in all kinds of shapes and forms, um, physically in, in both bars and coins, in, in ETFs and in some derivatives, um, and, and a little bit in, in mining companies, but mostly in, 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 in gold in various forms and shapes. You mentioned mining stocks. Axel, are you deterred by the recent financial results we've seen in this sector, or are you seeing this as a buying opportunity? Well, we, we're generally long-term investors, so we bought mining companies um, about a decade ago, and then after Pierre Lassonde re retired from Neon Mining, we kind of got out of the, the mining companies um, entirely um, for, for all the reasons that have been cited in recent years. And, and, and it, is, it, it is, of course, correct that um, the, there is a, a new thinking at some mining companies to be more value-oriented, so there's opportunity there. Um, the reason we, we focus on gold, per se, is just the dynamics are simpler, but, but clearly um, the, the values are depressed in, in the mining companies. And so there are some good opportunities there. We just haven't focused on those. Axel, before I let you go, just some quick thoughts on silver, which has been outperforming gold. Are you liking the metal today? Well, the, 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 the indication here, this might be more than a technical bounce. This means that some real money is going back into the precious metals, partly out of uh, more positive news coming out of China and so forth. Um, again, as, as far as we are concerned, the reason why we, we have gold mostly is because we like the reduced volatility it is simpler to understand than silver is. But yes, um, when the gold goes up, silver over the medium term is likely to outperform his historically. It's often done so. Um, and, and it's just that the like the lower risk profile that gold has. Now, clearly, everything is risky, including gold is. But um, we just like to keep it simple. That's why we hold gold and, and sleep well at night. Actually, I lied, Axel. One more question before I let you go. If you had to look at a trading range for gold right now, as we approach the end of summer, what is it? Well, the end of the summer, you're talking about the next unemployment report, so we're going to get some knee-jerk reactions here. But I think that um, the much of the taper talk is, is currently priced in. If we have some disappointing numbers, we can easily see a spike up to 1,400. Uh, it's very difficult to get these short-term price targets. I mean, the only reason you, you put them out is so you can revise them. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to, to see gold at 1,400 to 1,500 uh, by the end of the year. Axel, on that note, thank you so much. My pleasure. And thanks for watching this edition of Kitco News. You can email us at newsfeedback.kitco.com or you can follow me on Twitter at Daniela Camboni. Thanks for watching. <laughs>